Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Star. For the last week, I've been playing an early copy of Star Wars Jedi Survivor, getting to play through the entire story and figuring out all the secrets and tricks. I've already finished the game. I conquered it. The EA Creator Network hooked it up with the early copy, so the deepest gratitude goes to them. I feel honored by the opportunity. I've already started my second playthrough to make sure that I really know my stuff. I have a ton of videos lined up for the next couple of weeks, and I want to make sure that I've got the best information on YouTube. I can't give my impression or my review just yet. That will be arriving on the channel on April 26th at 8 a.m. Pacific. It will contain spoilers, so I'll have a second spoiler-free review for those who don't want to know anything, but both reviews will feature brand new gameplay, especially of my new favorite thing in the world, Blaster Stance. You guys are going to love it. I also also get to stream the game one day early on Thursday, April 27th. So if you guys want to see Star Wars Jedi Survivor played from the very beginning, make sure you're subscribed and getting notified. We'll be streaming it right here on the channel at 8 a.m. Pacific. I wish I could share the goods with you guys right now because there is so much to talk about. Right now I can't, but what I can do right now though is answer some questions that my community had about the game. I took some questions from both YouTube and Discord and I figured I'd answer a few of them here in today's video. I am still under an NDA, so the answers to these questions are not based off of my time spent playing the game this past week. Instead, these answers are based off of the initial four hours I got to play at the demo earlier this month in Los Angeles. Just had to throw that out there in case EA sees this and starts sweating bullets. Don't worry, I won't spoil anything in this video. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to force push the thumbs up button. So first up, we've got questions from Discord. Nate Dog asks, do you truly believe Jedi Survivor should have been a next-gen only game, or do you think there could have been room for slight adjustments for the game to work on the last-gen consoles, Xbox One and PS4? I can confidently tell you that Jedi Survivor would not work on Xbox One or PS4. This game had to be on the next gens only. It's just way too big. I played Jedi Fallen Order on PlayStation 4, and I ran into plenty of stuttering and frame rate drops in that game. I know for a fact that PlayStation 4 would not be able to handle Jedi Survivor. It really sucks for those who don't have the current generation consoles just yet because they are missing out, but game development in general is kind of in that transitionary phase where the previous gen is getting phased out and the current generation is just the standard. That's what games are getting made for, and Jedi Survivor is no exception. Next up, Cruisefire asks, do you know how many new planets there are in Survivor? And are there any of the old planets coming back from the first game, like Kashyyyk or Dathomir? Yeah, I do know how many new planets there are. I don't think it would be a good idea to tell you guys because I think that would actually take away from the experience, but I can confirm from the trailers that there's at least two to look forward to, those being Kobo, that main planet that we've seen in the gameplay, and Coruscant, which is hype. After that, Staruki asks, do you think the duration of the game will be shorter, longer, or the same as Fallen Order? It's gonna be longer, a lot longer, and that's all I'll say for now, you'll find out more tomorrow. The one and only JC asks, how many new enemies are there that I know of? There is a lot, my dude. I, I would have to go through and actually count how many there are, but I will tell you that there are way more new enemies than there are older ones, so there's a lot to look forward to there. Joey asks, how time-gated is the farming system if I tried it at all? I wouldn't say the farming system is time-gated. I'm assuming you're talking about the skill points and leveling Cal up. It's not that bad. It really depends on the enemies that you're fighting and how much exploring you do, because just like in Fallen Order, when you scan things with BD or when you find certain collectibles, you still gain skill points. And of course, the higher leveled enemies will grant you more skill points. So you can always do something like find a high level enemy, beat it, go rest at a meditation point, go back, beat the enemy again, and then just kind of repeat that cycle until you have the skill points that you want and that's the grinding aspect of it. I will say you definitely have to pick and choose where you put those skill points because these skill trees are massive. There are so many new things that Cal can do, but you'll get enough points as you play. I mean, you're always leveling up as you progress, so I wouldn't worry about the time gating too much. I think it's just fine. All right, I hope you guys can see this one. This is from MJ Skyskill on YouTube. They ask, one question that keeps coming to mind is when you switch blasters, will it change damage, range, or rate of fire on the blaster? Like, will Han's DL-44 be like the one in Battlefront? I can understand them not being able to change the details and it only being a cosmetic appearance of the blaster, but it would be cool if changing your blaster would change the way it feels. I'll tell you that the customization options on your blaster do not affect the functionality. You can swap out a couple of different parts, but that doesn't change the way the blaster works. 
I think I'm safe to tell you though that there are ways to make the blaster behave differently though. So yes, you can change it. Daniel Other asks, do you think we'll be able to change the sensitivity option this time? As a fellow 100-100 Battlefront 2 player, the default on Fallen Order feels really low for me. Yes, you absolutely can change your sensitivity. You can also change your field of view. There's a bunch of really cool options in the settings menu that really let you customize your game. Matthew Pace asks, is the map good and clear in the game? Yeah, the map in Survivor is really, really good. I would say it's better than the one in Fallen Order. There's a couple of new features that I found really handy when I was playing through it. For example, there's a yellow line that gets traced where you walk. So if you don't want to double back to a spot you've already been to, you can pull up the map, see which direction it is, and then you just know not to go in that direction. You'll always be progressing forward. After that, we have Pounce, and they ask, is there a day or night cycle or any sort of weather system in Jedi Survivor? No, I don't think there is. There are no clock-based events outside of the gardening, which isn't really a clock-based event. It's kind of just based on a timer. But as far as a weather system or a day-night cycle, as far as I can tell, that doesn't exist. Shalom Production asks, can I get every skill in the end? Yes, you absolutely can max out every skill tree. It will take a lot of grinding, but you can do it. Base God Dylan asks, can we have skippable cutscenes this time? Yes, you can skip the cutscenes. It's really nice. And I'll do you one even better. When you're playing the game, you can talk to pretty much anybody that you can go up to. And those conversations can take a really long time. There's an option in the settings menu that lets you skip that dialogue during those conversations. And I highly recommend you have that on. Next, we've got Crispy Cracker and they ask, are you able to change your lightsaber color independently on both sides of a double bladed lightsaber or dual sabers? For example, one green, one blue, or one white and one purple. Unfortunately, as of right now, no, you cannot do that. When you pick your lightsaber color, it's set for both sides. Maybe if there's enough fan demand for it, Respawn will add that in a future update, but for right now, you cannot do that, unfortunately. Our last question for today's video comes from Edward Alejandro who asks, will it have a new game plus? All I can tell you about that right now is that you should stay until after the end credits roll. And that's all I can tell you about that. It's frustrating, I know, it's frustrating for me too. There's so much that I wanna talk about and I just can't, not for another couple of days, but we're almost there. Jedi Survivor releases worldwide on April 28th. Once again, we're streaming Jedi Survivor on April 27th, one day before it releases. So if you're new, consider subscribing and getting notified and I hope to see you guys there. That's it for today's video though. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll see you next time. Peace.